Let's start off by looking at this cross section of the spinal cord. Here you'll notice that we have white matter and gray matter. The gray matter, which is in the middle, kind of looks like this butterfly or H letter, and the color comes from cell bodies and dendrites. When we look at the white matter here, these are referred to as funiculi, and the reason why they are white is because we are seeing the myelinated axons, which is kind of cool. Um, gray matter is responsible for integrating and processing information um, via those synapses we looked at earlier. Um, and then the white matter is responsible for relaying nerve signals along that myelin sheath. So it might help you to look back at the anatomy of a neuron to make better sense of that. As always, I like to make sure that we understand what direction we're looking at. And to help us with that, we need to look at these grooves here. This groove right here is called the anterior median fissure. A fissure is going to be a deep groove. And you'll notice that this is wider than the groove we have here. So if you see a deeper, wider groove, you know you're looking at the anterior side. This groove right here is called the posterior median sulcus. So posterior median sulcus, anterior median fissure. Right here in the center is the central canal, and I'll talk about that again in just a little bit. If this is anterior and this is posterior, and we have a bird's eye view, meaning this is the top up here, we know we're looking at the right side over here and the left side over here. So right, left, anterior, posterior. Let's take a closer look at the gray matter here. Again, these are divided into areas we call horns. So these will be the posterior horns, these are the lateral horns, and these are the anterior horns. The posterior horns, which are right here, again, we know this is posterior because this groove right here is the posterior median sulcus. This will contain the dendrites and cell bodies of interneurons. And remember, interneurons are those neurons that are located entirely within the central nervous system. And we have these pathways, somatic sensory pathways and visceral sensory pathways. You'll probably discuss those in a lecture course. But those are the things that um, will connect to things like tactile receptors in the skin or baroreceptors of the urinary wall that kind of tell our bladders that uh, they are filling and we need to void. So those are the posterior horns. Here we have the lateral gray horns. These are only found within the areas of the spinal cord within um, areas T1 through L2. Remember those um, abbreviations refer to the first thoracic vertebra through the second lumbar vertebra. So not every section of the spinal cord will have these lateral horns. And these um, lateral horns are made up of the dendrites and cell bodies of autonomic motor neurons. So remember the autonomic system will control things that we do not have conscious control of. So um, these uh, areas right here will eventually extend to and innervate areas such as cardiac muscle and the smooth muscle of the stomach. And then here we have the anterior gray horns. Um, these areas are composed of the dendrites and cell bodies of somatic motor neurons. So remember, somatic motor neurons will end up connecting to muscles that we can control voluntarily, like skeletal muscle. One interesting thing about the anterior gray horns is that this is the area where the poliovirus attacks. Um, it can cause paralysis, and that's really determined by what segment of the spinal cord is affected, meaning how superior or how inferior, and what skeletal muscles are affected by that part of the spinal cord. Right here in the center, 
of the gray matter is this opening within this area called the gray commissure, and that is the central canal. The central canal actually comes from the fourth ventricle up in the brain, which for my students, we will connect those dots in our next lesson, but that's kind of cool to think about that. Um, and the reason why we want to remember that is because we have cerebrospinal fluid flowing through that central canal. Um, so make sure you know where that is because it can also help determine other portions you're looking at on the spinal cord. Let's take a closer look at the white matter now. Um, the white matter, again, is colored as such because of the myelinated axons, which are responsible for um, relaying nerve signals. And as long as we remember our directional terms, you'll be golden on, on identifying these areas. So the groups of white matter are referred to as funiculi. Um, we used to call those columns, but columns are now terms that are specific to the gray matter. So we wanna make sure we learn the new term funiculi. So this area, because it's the anterior portion, this is going to be the anterior funiculus. Funiculus is just singular for funiculi. Here we have the lateral, so this would be the right lateral, and the left lateral funiculi. And then over here, we have the posterior funiculus. Let's now take a look at the structures outside of this area here. The posterior portion of the spinal cord, you can associate with the sensory functions, meaning that we will have sensory signals coming in the backside, and then we will have motor signals coming out of the anterior side. So starting here, a piece of sensory information comes in. We're going to have these bulge-like structures called the posterior root ganglions, and these actually contain the cell bodies of the sensory neurons. If you think back to our discussion about unipolar versus multipolar, you'll remember that sensory neurons have that unipolar shape. So those cell bodies are all clumped together here, which is why we have that bulging structure. Those will continue on to the uh, posterior roots and then these little rootlets. And you'll see that those rootlets go uh, directly into the posterior gray horns. On the anterior side, we have the uh, anterior gray horns right here. Those will connect to the anterior rootlets, and then those rootlets will form the anterior roots. Again, because this is anterior, and a minute ago we said, okay, we're going to associate the motor functions with the anterior side. That means that these are motor neurons. And going back to unipolar versus multipolar, you'll remember that motor neurons have that multipolar shape. So I kind of remember M and M, motor multipolar shape. The dendrites and cell bodies of motor neurons are within the spinal cord. So all we are seeing here are the axons, which is why you don't have a, an anterior root ganglion. You are only seeing the axons here. So over here where we have the anterior and the posterior parts joining together, so this part right here, that is what a spinal nerve is. And the spinal nerve is also referred to as a mixed nerve because we are going to have both sensory and motor sections within this area. Um, sensory going towards the spinal cord, motor leaving the spinal cord. This model right here shows a little bit more than what the previous model showed. Um, so remember here we have the gray matter, makes that kind of H shape. We have the white matter. This is anterior, posterior, right side, left side. How else do we know that based on this model? Um, this model has the vertebra on it. So here we have the uh, spinous process. We know the spinous process of the vertebra is the posterior side. Here's the vertebral body. We know that's anterior, so that's another way we can tell the difference uh, between the two. So outside of the spinal cord itself, here we have the posterior root. This little bulge is that posterior root ganglion. Here we have the anterior root, 
And then again, where those two meet up, that's what we call that spinal nerve. So beyond the spinal nerve, we have these things called rami. Um, this one right here, and actually these two, we have the left and the right, these are the posterior rami, and these will end up innervating our backsides. Here we have the anterior rami. Ramus is singular, so this would be the left anterior ramus, the right anterior ramus, but rami plural. These will innervate the anterior and lateral parts of our bodies, and when we look at nerve plexuses, um, a lot of them emerge from these anterior rami. Um, these structures up here are called rami communicants, and so those are just smaller things um, that innervate other parts of the body, but the really, uh, the ones that I want you guys to know would be posterior and anterior. My biggest tips for studying the spinal cord is to familiarize yourself with those directional terms, so anterior, posterior, right, left, things like that. And then when you start adding in pieces of information like, okay, the posterior side is sensory, anterior side is motor, I think you'll have a lot better time putting all this information. So I hope those tips helped. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about that, and happy setting.